Hello everybody, welcome to another day of Cosmeteer. Today what we're going to be doing is challenge number four. Before we dive into challenge number four, I know that a lot of times people look at people's thumbnails and they always wonder where that ship is or where this actual thing is going to be. So before we dive into this in full, welcome not your hero. We are going to create a new folder. Today is four. Forgive me if I cough a couple times. I'm actually sick, but we're doing this anyways. 24. All right. So the first ship, based on that thumbnail that you all see, is built by Butter. This is the ship right here, up close. We can take a look on the inside. Beautiful ship. Absolutely beautiful ship. Let's see how it does verse itself. Now, obviously, it's rail guns on the side. It's got chain guns. It's got flat cannons. It's got a whole bunch of nukes on it as well. With ion beams in the middle. I like this three beam. The three beam ions. Really nice, beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful ship. Welcome, Jose. Welcome, B3. This looks like an explosion point. Maybe a little bit more defense or something around there. I don't know. But either way, it's got huge amounts of damage. How much does this thing cost? Better make some really beautiful ships. 2.3 million. Sorry, it's piqued my interest. Since we're going to be doing challenge number four, which is very, very much... I don't even know what the challenge is for us. cost high. It's two million. Here. Hey, they made a new one. My shit's kind of based off of... Well, this one has the command posts on the sides. So it's different. Sorry, you piqued my interest when I once I saw Buttership. I just wanted to see how it does. He's got nukes, he's got flat cannons. They go for the wings. Such an interesting design. Butter is an interesting design. Now he has another one too, but we're not going to dive into all those ships right now. We're going to do challenge number four. Yeah, this is explosion point. Once this goes boom, which it will, it takes out, uh, it takes out the chain gun. This took it that side. I mean, he still has the ion beams going, and he still has the nukes going. It looks like he lost the command deck here the back oh, I wish I knew there was this atlas I would have worked on this one but I worked on a vague instead oops peeping at me all right cool design both of the cool designs I like it all right let's toss these out Let's go right into the challenge. So, challenge number four. Wrong ships. 421. Challenge number four. We are even going to look at them. Let me get to the top of the list here. So the first ship that we have on our list is made by Plows. I also have a rating system here as well in this Excel. So we're going to rate this one as well as we go through it. So, the first ship that he has is the Apothesis. And this is the original hypothesis. So we'll put the player's design in. And we will put in the ship and built in game ship. And we're going to go ahead and battle test it. Well, that's interesting to do with the ions right there. And then look how you change all the booster thrusters to make it go faster. And then 
synchronizing all of the actual ion beams. I think this one's gonna last for a very long time. It was an endurance test. So, what we do over here is I'm gonna change this. We'll pull an April. We'll pull in another one. <clears throat> Put a little distance away. Attack it again. Now, it did a tiny bit of damage on the front dish side. The ship should turn. Oh, my fault here. I wonder if I can clear this one. Is it following or is it attacking? They're on the same team. Why is it shooting EMP at it though? Yeah, I gotta clear this. Clear objects. Can I clear just this one? redo that. I'll switch the teams. So, restart this battle. Play as player two. There you go. <clears throat> now there are different teams. So you see what he did here, Flaus, what he did here is he changed this to constantly fire and aimed all the ion beams. He also changed the outlook of the actual ion beams. So they're going into single ions so it does more damage. And then he increased the speed you can click on something and then press the delete key on your keyboard to remove it. You can also change the team of a ship by clicking the little hamburger menu on it. Or you select AI, etc. Ah! Good to know. We're saying down here, I can come over here and I can probably change allegiance to player 2, which it is right now. also means that I can play as all players and then spawn them in and change it to team 2 each time. He even has the point defenses as... are they set to offense? No they're not set to offense. Definitely a fanning like ability. That's two ships. Bring another ship. Change this one to player two. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. There you go. Just let the AI fight it. <laughs> well, there's gonna be a whole bunch of debris inside these fights, just like how in the end game. They come from different angles. If it's moving. The original moves very slow. It looks like it only goes 20 meters per second. Where the modified version, this one right here, he's got good speed, especially with these booster placements. If you're looking for how to use these new booster thrusters, this is definitely an interesting and neat design here, Klaus. See if he affects the engines. Maybe it's not as well as it should. Maybe these are like EMP wall. I could. It's a good idea. this layered stack of armor here like this it gives it a cool neat design bring in another one change this one to player two AI 
nice to say he doesn't like me. Come on. All the AI do is thing. Maybe I'll spawn them closer. <laughs> I think it's a good distance though. It showcases the original ship was very, very slow. Spunder with the body helper so that it would do its own thing. <laughs> Still deciding that this is its. Who knows what it thinks it is? Ah, you see, come over here and I can say allegiance junk. Here we go. <coughs> These are all good tips. Thanks for sharing. Campaign does that automatically, but Battle Helper doesn't. Just changing an item to junk. amazingly well. This is a neat ship, especially a ship that you would have played in game. Now, at a different angle, if it gets locked in, I definitely survived far longer than I was expecting. It was a very, very cool ship, Klaus. Alright, creativity. I'm gonna give this one a good solid... I think it's 8 to me. The 1v1, it did amazingly. I think it survived against at least 4. I don't even count exactly how many, but maybe other people were counting. I'm going to say it did really well in 1v1. I'm going to give this one a good 8 as well. Well, maybe we'll change it as we face first the other ones. I think that would survive very, very well in 1v1. Actually, better than 1v1. It did. I'm going to give it a 9. Movement ability. I have no idea how fast it moves, so let's test that. With the amount of boosters on it and the size of the ship and the cost of the ship, it goes... 90 plus. Oh, well, way past 90. 108, 109, 110. It's still going. Wow, these thrusters really make a ship go fast, huh? Okay, I saw it go up to 130 something, but then probably there's a bunch of power things going on. But it goes to 129. A steady 128, 129. That. That is fast. Uh, that, that I'm gonna give a 10 for the size of a ship. I mean, movement for speed. I guess it's more of a speed. So we'll give it a, we'll give it a 9. And the main reason I'm only giving it a 9 because there's no way for it to back thrust too much. I'm sure if I tried to slow it down, like see here, if I were to come over here, and this is just in theory, right? I take a ship, I change this ship to player 2. And pause it for a second. Turn that ship around. How fast can this thing slow down? I don't think it's meant to slow down. I think it's meant to just ram into the guy. Yeah. I give it a good solid nine. I don't see any side thrust or anything like that. I, I, I it could definitely be a ten. 
in my eye too as well for rammer but beautiful ship love it anti-swarm ability i have no idea about anti-swarm let's give that a shot watch this thing cost again 4.5 mil definitely an expensive ship I don't have anything that I could give it as anti-swarm at the current moment of time. So I'm just going to do this and be silly. How many ships can take two of these? A lot of ships at these higher levels will have missiles. I know this is not a fair representation, but unless anybody suggests a different type of swarming type of ship. But I think it's going to do pretty well against two of these. Maybe? Maybe not. When you got missiles coming from both sides like this. Definitely doing better than I expected. Rip the ship apart right here. The AI needs to actually decide to fight this one because this is the one that's doing the damage to it now. It still did far better than I was expecting. It did pretty good as a, as, a, as anti swarm events two of these ships. We'll we'll face all of them against the same one, so we'll see how that goes. We'll give this one a good. I'm gonna give it a seven. Damage after battle. I'm gonna give this one a good. I think it did. I think it did ten. It wiped out those ships and then cleaned them up too. Practicality. I'm gonna give this one a good nine as well. Practicality. It's it's a pretty good in-game ship. It moves fast enough and get around the solar system pretty quickly. Has a good amount of damage. It's a good amount of sustain in a 1v1. Uh, it's cost-wise is really, really big. So when you get to this higher levels, it's definitely going to be very, very interesting. So cool ship there. Thank you, Plus, for sharing. Let's move on to the next ship. So the next ship that we have in our list is built by uh, somebody that's joined us as new, which is Duan. Juan Wayne, Juan Juan. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Okay, so the original ship is Liquidator. And he called it a Liquidated. So this looks like it has got a bunch of flat cannons on it. It's got deck cannons in the back. And then it's have these chain guns in the middle. Interesting amount of thrust here. And versus the Liquidator, which doesn't have any shields. This one does have shields. It definitely did a good amount of damage. Let's pull in another one of these Liquidators. Change this to Team 2. I wonder if there's a quicker way to do it. There is a quicker way to do it if I just select this team too. Alright, what do we do it? And then I can just mark these items as junk. stuck in there it's pretty cool with these chain guns it's cutting it in half right down the middle it still has a command deck so it still would it still has both command decks so technically they're still ships
doing really well. And our endurance test is doing very, very well. Still a second piece there. I'm gonna mark this one. What else does this get my thick there? Alright, we'll mark this one as junk now. This thing's very interesting. Once it gets cut in half, it's still basically two ships once you cut it down the middle. Alright, we're bringing a third one now. Put it over here on this side. Allegiance, team two. Mark these things as junk. It doesn't have any shields in the middle, so even though you cut it in half and take out this part right here, then it becomes two separate ships. It's a very interesting design there, Duan Wan, Duan Wan, whatever you, however you pronounce your name. Sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong, but this is a cool ship. Neat, very neat. All right. Let's clear all objects so my game doesn't start freaking out on me. So, first rating, creativity. I don't know, I'm gonna give it a good I'm gonna give it a good seven. I liked it. I think it's pretty creative. Seven-ish. Actually I think it's more than creative. I like how he has his armor here and here. I'm gonna give it an eight. We'll give it an eight. They're both very creative. I like the idea of it. It's a good eight. Alright. Fire speed wise, let's see how fast this thing moves. For the size of the ship, I think it's gonna go decent speed. These booster thrusters, for those that are new to the game or, or just coming back to watch it again, these things have a good amount of push. 75.3. That's a good amount of speed. Not as fast as the last ship we just saw, but that's a good amount of speed uh, for not adding a whole bunch of boosters and thrusters to it. I'm going to give this one for speed wise. Oh, I forgot the 1v1 part. I'm going to give it a good 5. And then 1v1, I think it did well. It lasted two, almost three ships. We'll give this one a good. I'll give it a good 6. We're comparing it best to the last, the last one, too. All right, Anti-Swarm. I think it did pretty well in an Anti-Swarm type of scenario, and I think it's actually going to perform better than my expeditions. So we'll keep the liquidated in there. We'll pull on the same test that we did. I don't know if it's fair to do the same exact test. Hold on. How much does that thing cost? Okay. Only two million. So because it's only two million... Let's change the swarming for something that's in the 2 million range. That's not 2 million by itself, too. Uh, we'll just use this one. Is gonna do extremely well, maybe. Yeah, gonna do extremely well. Now the cost doesn't go up to two million, so I don't think this is a fair representation for swarming. I need to find a better ship for swarming. We did missiles. There. One missile, one non-missile.
not your hero, just overall. Semi comparison, but not overall. Anything that goes over 100 is definitely super, super fast. And he's able, he's able to move side strife and moving side to side, so. For the size of the ship and for the cost, uh, you usually want something to go a little bit faster. And Howdy, I don't know how you pronounce your name, but looks like a R A N, Ran. Welcome. Now you can see in game you're gonna face ships with missiles you're gonna get swarmed from behind so in a swarming scenario we're using still one of the original ships and then we're using a smaller ship as a swarmer you can see that it, the back armor wasn't as heavily placed so as far as swarming it did okay not as great as the other one so we're gonna give this one I'm gonna give it a four Maybe not. Didn't do too much damage versus the two of them. It didn't have anything back. Hold on, let's take another look at this one more quick. I don't think he has a lot of back armor. So this is not a lot of back armor, so it doesn't have great anti-swarm for the back. And then the weak points right here and here. Okay, well we're gonna reduce it just by one point. I think it's a three. And a front for front battle in a 1v1, as long as it's not facing this way, it does great damage from the front. I can see it's doing a good amount of damage. Now, obviously, when you get all these missiles and everything else coming at you, it can definitely not be fair, especially when you're getting swarmed from behind by an actual true swarming ship. But damage-wise, I think it did pretty good for damage. Damage after battle, it did pretty well. I'm gonna give it a good seven. It did pretty well in the beginning. Practicality, in an in-game scenario, I think you would wanna add more armor in the back. But for practicality and the in-game, I think it did I think it did not bad. I'm gonna give it a six. All right, let's move on to the next ship. Next ship that we have is built by Ghost. Here in April, what we have in here is I think he has several different ships, so we're just gonna pull in this one because he has both of them in there. So, this first one, he is he has a spotlight mod 13, and then he also has this spotlight. Changed it to be uh, let's play as old players. Ion means and disruptors with shields. That's an interesting design. That's a very interesting design. All right, where's the original spotlight? Here it is. Put it behind him. The right for now. We'll change this allegiance to player two. I'm actually gonna play as player two, so I don't have to worry about changing that each time. That's a cool ship. I think it's gonna last for a long time versus itself. Yeah, I don't think this does enough damage, even with the EMP missile in the back. I don't think he's ever gonna get past these four shields. He's got one, two, three, four shields. He's got these. EMP going. Interesting design. I think he's going to have to fight multiple versions of it. So in a 1v1, 
The new modification that's on the spotlight, he's got these four small shields. He's got these disruptors here to disrupt out the actual shields on this one. He's got the constant sustained damage with the ion beams. Did he change it out to a large generator? Yeah, this one only has a medium generator, medium reactor, and this one has a large. So the changes on that one are huge. I think this one's going to just keep going. I don't, I don't see how it's actually going to stop unless I throw multiple ships at it. So the only damage that it received is just a tiny bit of damage here and a tiny bit of damage here. But even then, I don't see it ever taking out these shields. Maybe, <clears throat> maybe it will with the EMP missile coming. But you see how close the reactor is and everything. If we take a look on the inside. With the reactor this close, the shields are able to come back up, and these ones are still guarding for those ones. Alright, I don't think it's ever going to stop, so what we're just going to do here is we're just going to... We're just going to say swarming now, because I think it's just going to keep going. Play as player two. The original ship moves very slow, as you can tell. This ship right here actually has these, he changed the thrusters, so it moves just a bit more faster than the original. Maybe it moves the same speed, I don't know. We'll throw in another one. What am I doing here? Play as player two. And even then, you see it's not receiving a ton of damage. Now Swarm Reverse itself. Do two versus three. I think two was enough. Didn't need a third one. That's a cool ship there, Ghost. That's a very cool ship. I'm going to say creativity for a small ship. I liked it a lot. We'll give this one. I th I'm giving it a 9. I loved it. 1v1. I'm going to give this one a 10. I didn't see it ever losing versus itself. Movement speed. There's a, there's a new one. All right. How fast does this thing move? Now, for its cost, because it's a cheaper ship, I don't expect it to go super, super fast. But it does go faster than the original. It's going at a good 39, 40, above 40. So, near double the original speed. So, if you look at the original speed. That's not the original. This is the original. It goes 41. The original. And the main reason I'm judging this one differently, because uh, the original, and for the cost, and for the size... Most of these ships at a lower cost go a lot slower. So this one only goes 24, 20, 25. 25. So it goes about 15 over its original. And for its cost, because it's such a smaller ship, you don't have that many boosters on it. I'm going to give it a good, I think, I think it's a good 7. Just because this one's different. It's a much lower cost ship. It's a much smaller ship. And for the size and the game that you're going to play, I think it's 7. Plus he has hyperdrives in there with Hyperium. Uh, you didn't have to add those, so you added it in. It's pretty good. Now, anti-swarm ability, but facing its verse itself, I'm going to give this one a good... I'm going to give it a good 6 for right now. It did okay-ish. Well, it didn't start the battle with both of them here. Let's, let's retest this. 
if I had two of the spotlights versus one spotlight. How does this do? We'll give it a fair assessment. chopped in half like this depending on this thing I don't think it's moving fast enough I was having a tiny bit of shield issues here and there with the EMPs hitting it from the side but it handled the side damage actually pretty well yeah it still did pretty well because it can move faster than those other ships that's why I gave it a higher rating for the age of the ship I mean, the age of the cost of the ship because it's on the lower cost range. It did pretty well two versus one. And in fact, I know now it's not even going to lose any of this. So yeah, it did, it did good. So, for this one right here, we're going to give this... Not, I don't know what number I'm hitting. We're going to give this a good, I'm going to give it a good set. Damage after battle is definitely winning against itself constantly. We're going to give this one a good 7. No, I'm going to give it 8. Practicality, I see it totally being practical in the end game. It even has hyperdrives on it. It even has empty storage. See, he's got empty storage. He's got hyperdrives. Practicality this is totally worth playing as an in game ship. I could totally see that. We're giving this one a good 9. In fact, you know, I'm giving it a 10. I could totally see this being played as an end game ship. A little slow to fly around the solar system, but I think it do pretty well in the game. If you're playing this in the actual game. I think it would do pretty well in this cost range, what it is. Neat ship. Alright, Ghost has another ship in here. Let's go ahead and take a look at this other ship here. Our next ship that we have is a desecrator. Is a desecrator. I need to put it there. I'm gonna put it here. <coughs> and another desecrator. All right. Ship modifications. Take a quick peek at this. Still kept the original paint. Got deck cannons one, two, three, four, so eight deck cannons. What is this? A nuclear missile factory? Maybe I'm missing something. Where are the nukes? Disagree with this one usually. I'm gonna read the, what he described it. This one usually only survives one battle, but it does so while breaking it, barely taking any damage at all. I guess annihilated by the next round. Then he got tired working on it, he said. Interesting shields over here. Shields on the side. Interesting way he's put shields on the side of the ship. So it was an unfinished design, but the concept, for those that are watching, the shields on the side, the concept alone, this is a pretty cool, interesting concept. I haven't seen, or at least for my personally, in the community map, this shield placement. It's a cool idea. It could probably work better if you had, um, 
I don't know. More walkways to speed these guys in and out. Because you have all this empty space. But the concept alone is an interesting idea. And then the shield wall right here, this front part, this is a neat idea too. middle booster placement over this one this one has an engine room facing this one and that one has two engine rooms so this one has the gigs it is does still have two engine rooms lots of room to build on it I know this is not its finished product but ghost is a it's an interesting design creative now I know it's not a finished product and I know it's missing a bunch of things and I know he was still building on it but I think it's a creative ship the idea and concept the things you can pull away from this this shield placement here is a very interesting design and then he has the shield wall in the front here which would help which is helping tremendously, but he lost all this armor in the front. So I can see how, like he's saying, if he faces against another one of these ships, it probably will have a harder time withstanding. But after each battle, all you have to do is just replace armor and some sulfur here and there because it's got a huge amount of sulfur storage. Two. We'll take another one of these guys and throw it in here. <coughs> Mark this as junk. Now the original ship moves fairly quickly. Original has one, two, has six chain guns, three on each side, which is why he puts these shields here. Okay, yeah, then he lost the armor. The shields are having a tiny bit of problem. Losing size shields over here. But there's so much more that can be done to the ship. So, Ghost is still, I know it's not a finished product. So, if you had built on this more and modified and updated it, probably would have kept going. Yeah, only his armor repair between the one. And see, the only reason it lost is because it was just losing the armor. So, for repair costs and cheap to repair the ship if you're fighting in game versus itself it's definitely an effective ship as a tank I don't know if you're building it to be a tank <coughs> creativity let me get this one at night I like it 1v1 it did not bad Ooh, give it a good 7 movement wise I have no idea how fast this thing goes let's check it a decent speed for the sides of the ship but it still goes on the slower end and then I just saw that this engine went out of power now again this is not his finished ship <coughs> but for the size and the cost I don't remember exactly how much this thing cost 2.4 million 
Okay, for a 2.4 million ship that doesn't go very fast. Uh, especially with the new boosters and new thrusters. So we're going to give this one a, a... I'm going to give it a 5. And the main reason it's a 5, there's some bigger ships that kite and do other things at this cost level. Which, at the speed that it goes, it's never going to catch up. So we'll give that one a 5 for its cost and its size. Anti-swarm ability. Alright, we'll give it the same semi-test as the other one. We'll put in one of these. We'll put in one of these. And we'll see how this thing does. I mean, I think from the back, when you have a dedicated ship that comes in from behind like this, not going to withstand the damage from the back. <coughs> Lots of bombs in the back, and then once the back was taken out, it kind of took out the rest from the front and the back. We'll give this one a two. Damage after battle. I think it did good amount of damage after battle. We'll give this one a good five, though. And I'll give it a six. I liked it. <clears throat> Practicality. Eh, it's a pretty practical ship in the game. We'll give it a six. I think that was pretty good. It's not a finished ship, so. If it was a fully finished ship, I'm sure it could have a much higher score. All right, ghost ship number three. He's got a, ter what is this? Tereus Supportus? Hold on. That wasn't what I wanted to do. Your objects clear everything off. All right, let's pull this next ship. Wait, where did it go? Screw that too far. All right. April 21. All right, here's the modded ship. Here is the original. Now the modded ship, see there's a real gun in this thing. This one doesn't have a real gun, but it's got missiles. Interesting placement of point defenses with shield cover. Such an interesting, different design here, Ghost. Play as player two. Does it still have a command deck? It does, so it still actually is a working. It is soon to be gone, so let's get to the next one. This is junk. <clears throat> I like this layers of shields. He's got four large shields on one side. He's got four layers of sh large shields on the other side. And even though he has his army here to protect it, the shield still covers this way. He's got a railgun. He's got these point defenses, which... I've never thought to design point defenses exactly like he has there. That one effectively destroyed that one. Let's bring another one to the left-hand side now. Bring it a little farther away. Still shooting missiles. It goes too far away. It doesn't move that fast. This is a neat ship. <clears throat> One single rail cannon. He's got ion beams. He's got huge tank ability with these four large shields on the side. He's got these point defenses, which Really is an interesting design with the larger shields helping to cover it. He's got nukes. You even see the nukes. 
I didn't even notice him until just now. He's got nukes on it too. So instead of these missiles, he's got these nukes. He's already taken out three. I'll bring in another ship a little bit closer this time. We're going to mark this as junk. <clears throat> Turned around really quickly. That was nice. Good amount of thrust, good amount of movement. How much nukes does this thing have left? Okay, he's running low on nukes, but he's already taken out three. This is probably going to be the fourth ship he easily be able to wipe out. Maybe? He's got a nuke factory, so... It's probably going to last longer than I'm expecting. So, practicality, even though he has nukes and it looks like he's running low on nukes, he's got an entire nuke factory back here. Which means that for sustain, it's just gonna keep going. If I give it a break. But functionality wise, it's still going. That ship's gone. Conversion. It's now junk already. Ghost is an amazing ship. Versus the original, this thing has missiles on it, has ion beams on it, it's got EMP and missiles on it. <clears throat> this is an amazing ship. It's still going. It has protection in the back, protection on the sides. And even though he lost a few of these point defenses here, this point defense setup definitely gives brand new ideas into the concept of having all direction point defenses. You don't need that many point defenses. The shields help cover with the point defenses on it. Yeah, it's still going. It's still going. a jump. Let's just to see how this nukes consumption is going. Alright, so his nukes are finally mostly out, but because he's got a factory back here, they're producing still. Now its placement in the back definitely gives it a <coughs> lower advantage. They have to walk through all of this, and they have to walk through all of this, and then walk through the factory to actually get and then come back out. But you can see the nukes are still firing. He finally lost part of it. Mostly because probably his nukes consumption, without giving any break, constant fights. Wasn't able to resupply enough to do enough damage. To stop the constant barrage of fire. But as far as lasting longest, this one has lasted the longest out of all of them. For the size of the other one would have lasted longer than Ghost One. I don't think it ever would have lost the way it was designed. The cheaper ship one probably would have just kept going. But for a mid size slash bigger ship, how much this cost? Let's take a look at this. For 1.8 mil, that's pretty good. It's really good, actually. All right. Creativity, I liked it. I'm giving this one a 10. <laughs> I liked it that much. And in 1v1 scenario, I'm gonna give this one a good. I'm giving it a nine. Did I give the other one a ten? Yeah, I gave the other one a ten. That one I didn't receive losing. The movement wise, all right. Movement. Let's take this one. For 1.8 million ship. He's also got hyperdrives on it. He's got Hyperium in it. <coughs> It is very much on the slower side. So 37.38 doesn't even go 40. Now it can still fly around with Hyperium because he's literally got one, two, he's got six Hyperium. 
I mean, six hyperdrives on it, small hyperdrives, and then a Hyperion for it to jump around. So it still can technically move around the map. But because it doesn't fly forward very fast, but it's got good movement on the sides, I'm still going to give this one a five. Even though it's slow. Now, anti swarm capability, because it is not in the two million range, let's see if we throw one of these ships against it. We'll throw one of these, and we'll throw a smaller ship against it too. Just to see how this does. Trying not to go way past its cost, but still can stay semi similar to it. <clears throat> I think it's going to have some problems when another ship comes in from behind like this. This one doesn't have as much damage. But when you got these exposed areas in the back. It's going to have a little bit of trouble in the back. Now it does do good damage in the front. But it's not cutting in half fast enough. Yeah, this is definitely, a, it's still doing good versus anti-swarm. <coughs> it didn't fully lose its back. Now, if this had cannons on it, it definitely would rip apart the back a lot faster. It did lose part of its back. It doesn't have too much defense in the back, but it's still a good ship, I'm going to say. It's still definitely a good ship. It did completely wipe out one of the front ships. It's lost a lot of its back, as you can see from the back. So anti-swarm ability, it did pretty well. It did pretty well. I'm going to give it a good five. Not tremendously well, but not tremendously bad. Damage after battle, it did really good damage. I'm going to give this one a good eight. Practicality, you can totally see it being played as an end game ship. I can give this one a hit as well. Alright, move on to the next ship. The next ship that we have on here is made by Dwan Wayne. So we have the second one in here. Dwan Wayne. He's got totally different colors on them. I'm assuming this is the new one. This is the original. So the original has got these shields, it's got these chain guns in the middle. And then his totally different paint design. Love the creativity there. He's got these nukes, he's got this armor still in the back, so it's interesting, more open. That's a good point there, is what did not hear say. That was the only ship tested against the storm worth more than its value for what it's worth. Yeah. <coughs> the other ships are 200, 400k more than their swarms test, but that one was tested with 200 less than its swarm. So, still, cool design, cool concept. Taking a long time to reload. Now, the original already lost all of his chain guns in the middle. Interesting concepts and designs. Okay, we'll bring him over to the right right now. We'll mark this as junk. It's also junk. Turns it into like a cargo ship. It's interesting. <clears throat> I think the only thing that this ship's gonna have a problem with is ammo. Unless there's factories on it. Yeah, it's gonna run out of nukes. And it will eventually run out of ammo. So the two battles already so far. 
It's costing it a decent amount to destroy each one of these. There two. More both these items as junk. We'll do it this way first. Bring another ship. <clears throat> This armor placement of the shield, so you have one shield that's a little bit further back and it's covered with this layer stacked armor, which still helps protect here and this right here. So for those that are really looking at this from a design aspect, because I was trying to do something similar like here with one winded. The armor's out like this, and then he's got this this shield one layer back and this shield one layer forward. This shield still covers the middle. And this shield still covers here. So these larger shields are effectively still protecting the front while protected by armor. So for those that are looking to design shields, larger shields like this, for design of a ship like this, this is very well placed and very well done. So I just was trying to highlight that for people that may not really understand why this ship is being able to tank so well. And then he's got these layer stacking of these smaller shields in here placed perfectly so that it still protects here so he has this layer of armor and these larger shields to protect these smaller shields even though they're kind of back here it looks like they're exposed but he has all this extra armor here in these shields to protect down the middle we'll mark these as junk we'll pull in another one didn't mean to place it that far away but that's okay How's the ammo supply going? Okay, so you see he's already out of nukes on this side. On the left side, I don't know why one side's more than the other. Probably because guys are running around the ship. His ammo supply is starting to get low, but for a sustained amount, ammo is cheap to make if he had a cargo ship or transport ship to help build those. His nukes would probably be a little bit more expensive to replace. He did finally lose one large shield here. This large shield looks like it's going to go down too. And then once he lost those ones, now he's losing all of these shields. The damage output, because he doesn't have the nukes, is causing it to have uh, the sustain is, is basically lost after he lost the nukes. One side of the nukes, anyways. And then ammo is harder to reload faster, as you see, they have to go to farther distances to come and get the ammo. That was one of the things I was going to mention, is it does look like it takes a long time for it to reload the chain guns. But it still did, it still did well. So I liked it. I did like it. We're going to try to speed up these ratings a little bit. Creativity, I'm going to give it a good solid 8. I liked it a lot. 1v1, it did very well. I'm going to give this one also an 8. Movement ability. Let's check this movement ability here real quick. Turns at a good speed. <clears throat> 54, 50, 55, 56. How much does this thing cost? 58.8? 58.8. For the min range cost ship. It moved pretty good. It's got good turning ability. We're still going to give this one a 5. Anti-swarm ability. Now this one is because it's only 800,000. That's going to be a harder one to decide on. We'll give it two of these. I know I don't have any cannons even though it's facing against cannons. And the ship cost is a lot lower. It's, in fact, these ships are not even going to swarm. It needs at least one more. Because we're all lasers. We will do one of these. There we go. 
Now this one's got projectiles and it's facing his energy weapons, but at least we'll have one ship that should be able to come from behind. Forcing it to be attacked from the sides. He does have armor in the back, so it's very, very nicely placed. <clears throat> now, for the cost of the ship, 800,000, he's not going to face too many other ships that have a lot of other different things on it. Projectiles and stuff. This doesn't come until a little bit later in the game. Ish. It does It does show up around this time frame too, the 800,000 range. I think if he attached all these pieces, see how they're separate pieces, then he wouldn't have these things falling off. So if it was fully attached, not just separate, because you see how each one of these back armors are falling off? And then damage-wise, he's not quickly destroying these ships fast enough, but he is able to take damage from all different sides. So at this point in the game, if you're playing at 800,000, definitely can have other ships or other type of ships to be able to help or assist. Obviously this was a, more of a design to face versus itself, but it still did fairly well. It took out this ship, it took out the other ship. I think it actually still might... No, oh, it doesn't have any more shields. And this crew member is missing a door. Okay, so he only has these six guys. Four guys, and we should be six. This bunker's missing a door. Let me just take a look at it real quick. We're not really facing it. Yeah, this bunker right here is missing a door. That one has a door. So you have two crew members doing absolutely nothing on one side, which would change the whole design, especially if you added the door right there. Yeah, it would change the size of the shields to be able to last longer, so. Something to always look at when you're optimizing your ships. All right, Anti-Swarm, <coughs> did pretty good. Destroyed two out of the three. We'll give it a good six, I liked it. Damage after battle, it did pretty good. We'll give this one a seven. Practicality, yeah, it's a pretty practical ship. Give it a good seven, I liked it. All right, B3Q0, we just got two more ships coming in. I know this has been a longer stream than the ordinary. Thanks for sticking around. All right, BQ30. Again, I don't know if this is referencing a uh, Star Wars droid, but that's everything I it's time I read this person's name, but I think of a Star Wars droid. Anyways, BQ, B3Q0. Odysseus. This is an Imperium ship. All right. I'm actually interested to see how this will do. An Imperium ship. Wow. Look at the ion placement. And then he's got the nukes on the outside compared to this one, which I guess this one does have nukes on the outside. He removed the flag and put in shields. <clears throat> yeah, I actually think shields on this are far better than these flat cannons. Well, he took the cost and removed it. Now the nukes on the outside are definitely doing devastating damage to the rest of the other nukes. So he's already lost one side of nukes. He's only got three more nukes on this side. But as far as the ion and everything else, that... Play as player two. Let's bring another one of these guys. We always did it on the right first. We'll do this one on the right. Let's mark this as junk real quick. Ship in. <clears throat> now you see all the boosters on it and you see how slow it's still moving because of the cost so that first ship we saw with its creator definitely was going super fast
Okay, he lost some of these shields. He lost some of those shields. <coughs> the pure fact that he took on two of these ships by itself is pretty impressive. Because Imperium ships do a lot of damage. I'm thinking this third one though is going to definitely cause it. My game's already starting to freak out because it's, these ships cost so much and there's so much going on. All right, let's mark this as junk. Trying to fix my mouse here real quick. Yeah, maybe it's just my mouse. <laughs> I think in this one right here, if he does same damage around the same place, because it's lasting. <clears throat> Why are the nukes not firing? Yeah, I was wondering the same thing. <laughs> They're probably fire at target. Yeah. It has to have a target. <clears throat> it must have a target. So just like how... Just like how they're all saying... It must have a target. Junk. We're just gonna target the command post. <laughs> this is a more fair assessment because after this other one, we were normally we didn't give it a target. The original ship, this is the original ship though. Okay, number two. Set fire will. You're right. I should just change it to fire will. Take off the target. Put O H. Do this again. deserves one more test because these nukes were not firing. We can change it to fire at will now, now that we know that that's, that's what's needed. Still, it's doing... It's doing way better than... Still has these here. Yeah, the mod one keeps winning. Let's come over here and mark this as junk. Let's give this more. <laughs> Let's change number two. Let's change this to fire at will. saying to retest it let's retest it give it one more shot select dog clear all selected okay battle helper we'll try this again now the battle helper is going to actually pick targets so nuke should fire this first one then we pull the other one i like the armor placement here And then the, the nukes are already ripped off this side.
Okay, we'll bring in another one of these. Mark this as junk. This guy in. Number two, change these to Fire Emblem Hill. Because these ships are so big, see they're getting stuck on other pieces. Say this ship's already basically gone, even though it's. Did I just throw a mod ship at itself? No, wait. Okay, yeah, this is the Odysseus. And this is the modded one. <clears throat> when it's facing versus itself, like, it's, yeah, these ships. Once the nukes are firing. The secondary nukes, it literally just started tearing up sides and parts of it. So, still, still cool design. I liked it. Let's take the new modded ship. I don't know how fast this thing goes. We'll test that real quick while that thing's flying. Creativity, B3Q, zero. <clears throat> I liked it. It was cool. Could be a good seven. Movement wise. Turns pretty slow, but it's got these new thrusters on the back, so I'm gonna assume that it's gonna go at a decent pace eventually. It just takes time for it to get up to that speed. But turning wise, it looks like it's gonna turn very slow. These are the only ones that help turn faster. For its cost, it does definitely move pretty good, so 66.8. 1v1, we're gonna give this one. We'll give it a four. Didn't last more than the second battle. Once we change the nukes, movement wise, we'll give this one a five. Anti swarm capability. I am interested in how this will do. I don't think it's gonna last as long as the other ones. Four million, so it can't take two of these. Yes, yeah, since the cost is way less, we're just seeing how well it can anti swarm versus something where it has missiles coming from all different directions. I'm pretty sure it's going to wipe this one out pretty quickly. There's ion beams in it. But yeah. The back is too exposed, just like I was thinking. If another ship gets from behind and can do a decent amount of damage, which this one can, you'll see that it rips this thing apart really, really quickly. We'll give this one a good two. <clears throat> damage after battle definitely wiped out the other ship. We'll give it a good seven. Practicality. In the game, it's going to have problems in the back because they anti swarm. So, practicality, I'm still going to give it a five. Pretty cool ship. I liked it still. All right, Hosep, I don't know if yours was an actual submission or not, but you have a single ship here with the original Vega. So, I'm going to pull it in anyways and showcase it. Because you have it in that channel. So, this is a Vega. And let's pull in the original Vega. Ooh. 
Now this one he made, he said made for fun. Slash maybe it's a real and actual one. You can see he added chain guns in the back here. He's got these nukes. I really like how the nukes come in on the inside and blow things up. Such a neat, cool design. All right, where's another Vega? Uh, no, 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 no. There it is. Bring it up to right. Not what I wanted to do. Let's mark these items as trash, which I already did. <clears throat> saying I love your v-shaped ships in theory but it's always so high risk so when the arms get shut off it's extensively costly that's true it's still going the nukes barely lost but he's already out of ammo for the nukes that's the second Vega I'll bring in another one Wipe these things out. <clears throat> we got ship debris all over the place. I don't know if it was an official entry or not. Take a look at that. Well, we'll take a look at it after. Okay, the original crew is 260. He kept the original 260 crew. This is both. It's both still 260, and he kept the cost almost near the same as the original. The original is 1.6. His new one is 1.6. So he kept it very, very close to the similar. Because he just removed a lot of things and then added a bunch of things in. <coughs> yeah, this is a very, very well, nicely modded ship here. I think because he lost the thrusters on the side, you see the movement right here. It's having problems trying to actually fully rotate. And then this ship right here, because it's... Because he lost the thrusters on the side it's not able to turn quick enough to attack the ship and eventually this thing's gonna whittle it down no projectiles I think it's just gonna wipe out the side there so probably the one downside right here is there's not enough armor for the engine rooms on the sides right here as you can see that would be something that I would modded on the Vega that I built out and the reason why I added armor on the sides is specifically for this exact reason once you lose the thrusters on one side, the ship becomes uh, near impossible for it to be used anymore. As you can see, I can't, it can't turn anymore. And if another ship is on your side like this, just like how it is, it's not ever going to, you're going to have a problem. And then it's slowly whittling away and it's going to actually take it out. Still, really cool mod. I like it a lot. <clears throat> In a 1v1 scenario, it definitely was winning it versus itself. So I'm going to give this one, just because I like the Vega 2 as well, we'll give this one a good solid 8. Liked it. 1v1, it definitely was winning. In a 1v1 scenario, once we brought in more, it was definitely having a little bit of problems from the sides, from the engine rooms. But he kept the cost almost near identical to its original. So I'm still going to give this one a good 7, because I liked it. Movement speed... Let's take a look. I think he's lacking in engine rooms. I think that's... But for its size... It's actually moving still pretty good. <clears throat> size and cost 1.6. It goes 6... 6... 65? 65. We'll give this one a 6. 
Still had problems with the moving. Anti-swarm capability. I think it's definitely going to have some problems in anti-swarm capability. But we will see. Uh, it is the 1.6 million, so... We'll just do this one with one of these smaller laser ships. <laughs> we'll see how this handles it. Actually, you know what? That's the wrong test. The right test is this one. Two of these should equal close to the same cost. The versus the other ship. <clears throat> definitely cheaper but these ones are devastatingly do a ton of damage they also flank very very well more so than what you would find in the in-game so when you're getting attacked from two different angles you'll see right here the attack from the back the back is definitely exposed on the mega now because it does so much damage he's able to wipe out this first ship fairly quickly but once you take out all the movement, which is what the ship is doing right now, you see his movement is lost. Sure, you can definitely see two of these fight the tourists. And you see once he lost all movement, the Vega or his modified Vega is definitely a basically a sitting duck there. Now, if you were to fly in this ship, you would just stay from behind. You would obviously go from the behind part, and you would just take it out from behind. You can see two of these ships right here. Uh, the lasers are no longer able to do what it needs to do, and it's slowly whittling it away. So I think the, the booster placement right there is definitely something to look at and change, host up whenever you get a chance. Obviously, this ship is being silly and going in the front, and when it's in the front like this, it's going to be taken out. But still very very cool I think anti-swarm capability we're still gonna only give it a two damage after battle it definitely did huge damage took out that first ship very very fast we're gonna give it a seven practicality I liked it I'm giving it a seven still so still really really cool I like the ship a lot all right now what was requested here was to take two of these ships and face it versus the tourist one April 21, Tourist, 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 Tourist Mod. <laughs> that is a better comparison, yeah. I'm thinking it's going to have some problems here in the back. As you'll see right here, when this ship swarms around in the back, you have decent output in the front. But if this ship takes out these engines, which it's doing, you'll still have turning capability in the front, it looks like. <clears throat> but once the engine and then the AI is being tricked to different things thinking that this is still a threat still it did pretty good did pretty good You see two of these ships, they cost less, but they do devastating amount of damage, especially from the back. So obviously you would mix and match these flankers with a more dedicated tank. They tank pretty well, but they're they're meant for flankers, flanker damage. And they purposely fly in a way that they'll get a position to flank. Alright. That is the last ship that I see. Let me just double check that. Yeah, that's the last ship that I see that's uh, submitted for the challenge. I did semi create a ship. My ship is more along the lines of the Vega. And actually, you know, I never pulled in the one that uh, Hosep helped me build. So I had Butter take a look at this ship. He helped me change this. So Butter helped me change this. This is not really a submission, I just have it. Versus the original Vega. So you're going to notice that this one, instead of having just one tongue, we have two. 
and then I still have all this armor over here protected like this. And I took the ship again and I also collaborated with OSIP, so I have another version as well. Now the two tongues, with also the placement of these ion beams, this is what Butterer suggested, is you can remove one of the ion beams. Maybe add, I don't know, he said you can do more damage this way, which it does. <coughs> so the two tongues, you see how they move around and do different damages? They do a good amount of damage. And I'm liking this, this two-tongue approach right here for in-game ship. I really like it. Helped the design and place it. Now there's one other ship that Osep helped make or design of this. So I took the design, passed it to Osep, and he helped me change this even further. Again, this is not really submission, it would just be playing around because that's not what I wanted to pull in there. Oh, I just threw it in there. What did you, what did you call it? Huh? I ended up tossing it. Here it goes. This one has nukes. Actually, I'm going to delete that one. I don't want it in that folder right this second. We're going to take a look at it. All right, so this one right here is Laser B1 Nuke is what it says. But I think this is the one without nukes. He just has a name that way. So this one has, still has the two tongue lasers in it. But he changed the armor and asked him to help fix the armor somewhat. So you see the armor actually makes it look cooler, I'm guessing. And then he still has a hyperdrive up there. The hyperdrive, I believe Holsip said the hyperdrive, uh, the AI decides to target this hyperdrive somewhat in some cases. And I wanted to keep it a full energy ship. I was having a little bit of problems here. The armor to, armor to ratio here might be a little too much. You see right here it's attacking the insides instead of here not attacking the insides so much. Still versus the two mod ships, it definitely takes a whole bunch more damage. But I'm liking the improvements and designs. Definitely gives me more ideas. By the way, if you ever want to collab on a ship, you can hit me up. Ever. Absolutely. We'll definitely hit you up, not your hero. Which I believe is Ghost. <coughs> really cool design. And then he had one more version of this as well, which Hosa brought back because he wanted to actually add in nukes. So the other version that he has here actually has nukes on it. I will override it. This one right here, it actually has nukes on it. And he said, yeah, I know he I know I wanted to keep it just pure energy. This one actually has nukes on it and uh, hatches for it for them to actually get it. Now, once you add nukes into it, it definitely will change how much damage this thing will do. But then obviously you have to have supply for nukes. Still, I like the concept, I like the ideas with the collaboration on here. Definitely gives you different ideas and different concepts for people that are just looking to see well, what can you do to a ship and how can you change it, collaborate and make it even more cool, more better. So you can see it definitely did better than my modded ship that I had here, which is a two. So still cool, still pretty neat. I know this one's a little long, I actually have to get off, but what I do want to do in the next one, which we'll probably do either later today or uh, sometime later on, is we'll go through our Cosmos ship, ship PNG only in our Discord. People have submitted a decent amount of ships for us to look at and change. There's also been a new person that joined us, which was CT7567, which also posted a couple ships for me to modify and or see if we can add improvements. Because I gotta get off now, I hope you all enjoyed this. So if you enjoyed this content, please feel free to hit the like button. Helps me out a ton. Helps to push out this content to other people. If you would uh, like, please feel free to leave me a comment down below. Tell me what you like, tell me what you don't like, especially what you don't like so that I can improve and make better content. If you have not already, please feel free to subscribe. If you don't want to subscribe, that's okay as well. Come back once a week, once a month. Check out what content I have. Thank you all for being here. Thank you all for watching. And you all have a wonderful rest of your day.